Hi there, this is Ryan here from Funk, and today we're going to be showing you how to fit one of our brand new Mark III turbo blankets. So here they are, they're both available in carbon fiber and titanium like you see here. They both perform exactly the same, it's just the final skin that's different, just to give your engine bay that little slightly different look. So if we have a little look on the inside of these, you can see that the Mark III construction has been produced purely for increased durability as well as improved and thicker insulation. Okay, these actually perform up to two to three times better than the Mark II equivalent. Okay, so let's have a little look what's inside the packet. So first up, you'll notice naturally you'll have your turbo blanket of choice, either in carbon fiber or titanium. In there, you also have uh, some springs and a nice funk motor sort of keyring, as you see here. And you'll also have your product guide. This product guide is very important and I would thoroughly recommend reading it cover to cover. It's got everything you're gonna need in there, some do's, some don'ts, some tricks, how a turbo blanket works and why it works in the way, as well as a complete fitting guide to accompany this video. Some things that you may need to fit, either some pliers or a spring puller tool. And definitely, if you've got more sensitive hands, I would definitely recommend wearing some gloves for this procedure. Let's have a little look at your uh, look at the fitting. And the same principles apply if you've got an externally gated turbo like the one you see here, or an internally gated, which we're going to look at a little bit later on as well. So first up, you want to make sure that that's nice and dry throughout so that no contaminants can actually make it onto the turbo. So you want to be looking around the flange, around the core, and also the downpipe area. If there's any contaminants here, that could be oil, that could be water, that could be grease, any of those that could, would then end up seeping into the blanket could cause you big issues later on. So you've got to make sure that they're nice and clean, nice and tidy, uh, so that you, you you don't, you don't run into any issues. Okay, so we just turn this around. So despite the orientation being slightly, may end up being slightly different to your turbo at home, the same principles do apply. For this demonstration, I'm gonna say that this is the top face and this is the bottom face, um, but you know, you just bear that in mind when you're fitting. If you look at your turbo blanket, you'll notice that there's actually a slightly larger portion and a slightly smaller portion, as well as the Funk Mode Sport emblem and the uh, fabric tag they both indicate that this is the top. So the, the thicker portion, as well as the fabric tag, in, tag indicate this is the top portion. And um, I would also try to look at your turbo and, and try to understand what's the hardest area to reach, okay? What's the hardest, most difficult area to reach? So a lot of people, they'll be working from the top, so that's gonna be the bottom. So what I would start by doing is actually taking one of your springs and using it to fit on one of the, on the hardest to reach areas on the blanket. So first up, I'm gonna say that that's the bottom in this application. And I'm going to fit those two springs just by hand, just here. Okay, just while we've got a little bit of extra space. Perfect. And then for now, um, I'm going to just roughly put that in place. Don't worry about fitment too much because we're definitely going to finesse that a little bit later on. Naturally, with a downpipe in place, it would be a little bit easier because the turbo blanket will naturally just form around that. Here it may look a little bit messier. Okay, so if I just slide that roughly in place, just as you see here. You want to get that sitting nicely around your downpipe and then secure your first spring in place okay that can either be the x uh, sorry the external face or the inboard face it's entirely up to you and personal preference you may find this a little bit tricky so you may end up needing your pliers just now so if i just fit one in place just for now okay and then i go around to the other side and fit the other Okay, so now both springs are in place. I can really start to manipulate the turbo blanket just so that it sits sits nicely. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna make sure that that's nice, it sits nice around the uh, downpipe. And if I turn that around, what we really want to make sure is that it's not obstructing any of the pipe work, the inlets or the outlets on the turbo core like you see there. You'll, re you'll really start to know that the turbo blanket is sitting nice after the center portion here is nice and smooth. That there will indicate a nice uniform insulation and therefore would actually provide better heat resistant qualities. Okay, so just got to make sure you manipulate that. You can definitely do this by hand. Um, as long as that's looking nice and all out of the way, then you're done. Once you're happy with the overall fitment, you're actually ready to go, ready to start the engine. You, what you'll notice over the first one or two heat cycles, you may see a light, slight bit of white smoke coming off the turbo blanket. This is very normal. This is just while the in, internal structure starts to form to the shape of the turbo. Okay, it's so nothing to worry about and it should disappear after a couple of hard heat cycles. So now you can see some close up images of the turbo blanket actually fitted to the turbo, just so you can get a better idea. Then we're gonna move on to the internally gated system. 
That brings us on to the internally gated blankets. Okay, these are slightly different to the externally gated ones because the turbine housing isn't symmetrical. Our internally gated blankets actually have a nice cutout just to accommodate the uh, internally gate gated systems. And what you'll notice there is you've got your actuator arm that actually runs over the top of the turbine housing and our blankets actually run underneath. Internally gated systems can look different in all sorts of different ways. Like you can see here, you've got a nice TDO4 with a five and sometimes a six, ex six stud exhaust exit. And this one here retains a three stud, but again, continues to have the, um, the internally gate there. Other systems may be slightly larger and they actually utilize the T4 internally gated blanket. The one we're gonna be looking at today is the T3. Larger turbos might require the T4 internally gated blanket, which is used, utilizes the same principles. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the smaller version, which is the T25 internally gated. As you can see, it looks very, very similar to the previous blanket albeit a little bit smaller, but it has a nice cutout to accommodate a range of internally gated uh, systems, like you can see here, or on this, uh, this turbo just here. Okay, so the same principles apply about checking for contamination. And as you can see, what you want to try to identify is this cutout and where it's actually gonna sit on the turbo. We do get a lot of people that get a little bit confused in this area, and you know they might may try to put, put that the wrong way up, but at the same time, you know, all you, just need to, all you need to remember in this instance is the cutout fits around the actuator. Okay, I won't show you the entire fitting again, but I will show you a fitted version, okay? So as you can see here, the actuator arm still has plenty of space to move and the blanket actually runs underneath. You can see how that cutout there works nicely around the actuator arm. The blanket will work in exactly the same way and it will be secured using the same springs. So there you have it a complete installation guide of both our external and internally gated Mark III turbo blankets. We do actually have complete installation guides of all the turbo blankets that we supply. Uh, you, you'll find these in the video category at the end of the video. If you'd like to see how these perform on the dyno, we have actually produced a video just to show you exactly that uh, on an R34 Skyline on the dyno. That's definitely not one to miss. Check that video out at the end. If you've got any more questions, hit us over at funkworksport.com.